Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out my channel and my first ever YouTube video on how to make this beautiful mountain art piece. The first thing that I had to do was cut all of my steel for the outer frame. The outer dimensions are 4 feet by just under 2 feet. So I took out my Makita chop saw and got everything ready to go. And after I made my first cut, I started to measure out uh, for the outside length. And uh, as you can see here, I struggled with figuring out which side to mark the miter on for the second cut. Um, one of those moments when you watch back and just think, wow, that's uh, a little embarrassing. The next thing that I had to do was grab my grinder with a 100 grit flap disc on it. I wanted to make sure to clean up all of the edges of where I had cut properly so that they would weld together well. Um, the one problem with using a cutoff wheel in my chop saw is that it does kind of leave a rough surface that needs to be ground away. Then I grabbed uh, some Varsol and gave all of the pipes a quick wipe down so that, to make sure that they were nice and clean of all the grease that was on them. A buddy of mine, Dan, helped me make this simple jig out of some plywood to lay the pipe down to get uh, accurate and repeatable frames as I plan on making a few of these. Uh, the guy loves jigs and this one was really helpful. Once the pipe was on the jig, I used my Lincoln Electric MIG Pack 140 to tack everything in place. I checked for square over and over and over and used these little welding magnets to make sure that uh, things held square. I do ne definitely need to make myself a proper welding table. I'm just using flux core, no gas, uh, as this is my first real big welding project, so I figured I'd work up to using gas at a later time. Once everything was tacked in place, I could go back and actually weld it together. Like I said earlier, this is my first real big welding project, so some of them look great and others definitely needed some touching up. Uh, I think a big part of the learning curve is figuring out the voltage and feed rate of the wire to make sure everything's good. When I was happy with all the welds, I got out the grinder with a flap disc on it and 100 grit flaps to clean everything up. It's still so cool to me when you reveal what looks to be one solid piece of steel underneath the weld. Already looking forward to my next welding project to keep building some of these skills. Now that the outer frame and the actual mountain frames are done, I need to move on to adding some one quarter inch steel rod to make the sun rays. These are both for aesthetic and structural purposes. Yeah, they look great, but they also help keep the mountain frames from being able to move around freely. These I just eyeball and cut with my grinder and a cutoff wheel. I do like to keep the W shape at the top just as a little nod to my last name. The number of rays is totally arbitrary. I think I used five for this project. I now need to move on to the actual wood parts of this woodworking project. I start by milling up some walnut and maple that jointer, getting a flat base and edge, and then move on to the planer to get it to the final thickness. Unfortunately, I didn't film the part where I was using my planer, um, but the final thickness of this wood is around three quarters of an inch, which is a allows it to sit back in the frame ever so slightly. I then move on to the table saw, where I rip 1.5 inch strips. This again is something that's just an arbitrary measurement, I just think that that width of strip looks good for the final product. To form the mountains, I use two strips of maple at the top, cut at 45 degrees at each end. These are cut at about 6 inch lengths for the larger mountain, and 5 inches for the smaller. Then I start the seemingly never-ending trips back and forth to the, to the miter saw cutting walnut. I place it in the frame and then strike a line slightly too long. That way, when I have all of them glued together, I can guarantee a good foot fit and account for any slight variances. If I was to measure each piece, I know that there would be a slight error that would be visible and it's much harder to go back afterwards and fix. At this point, I'm really not that concerned if the strips are a little bit too long because what I'll do afterwards is just mark a line at each edge of the triangle and be able to take out my track saw and lay the track down to meet that line and then cut it perfectly to fit each individual steel frame. Unfortunately, I did not film this part when I was actually doing it in the garage. Um, but as you can see later on, the mountains do fit. I think I had to go back and make maybe two, two adjustments on each mountain. So that does really work well.
To fasten all the pieces together, I just use a CA glue and an accelerator as these are not load bearing at all and so all that matters is that they are stuck together relatively well. This makes the glue up go so much faster and I don't need to worry about trying to make jigs or clamping calls to clamp the kind of the awkward angles. Um, this process has worked for me in the past and it really does speed up, especially if I'm trying to make two, three or four of these at a time. Once they're all glued together, it's time to move on to my most dreaded part of any project, which is the sanding. I put on my respirator and just kind of go to town. The big Bosch sander makes quick work of it. Now I turn my attention back to the steel mountain frame. I hit it all with the flap disc and wiped it down with some more Varsol just to make sure that any grease is gone. And then I apply three coats of matte black spray paint to it. Uh, my wife and son make a quick cameo here as they're walking through, um, well, their feet do anyways. For these finishing parts of the project, I kind of bounced back and forth from the steel frame to the wooden mountains. Um, as the paint is drying on the frame, I moved back to the mountains so I could apply the finish. Uh, for this I'm using a couple coats of Minwax Tongue Oil. I feel like it really makes the grain pop and, and looks good and is a simple finish to apply. I actually use an old baby towel to make sure that the finish goes on nice and smoothly and buff it in. For me, ever since I started doing some woodworking projects, applying the finish has always been my favorite part. It's kind of the part where you see all of your hard work kind of come to fruition. After the finish on the wood and the spray paint on the frame was dry, I took the mountains towards the frame and held my breath as I placed them for the first time in there, all finished. They look great and this was the first sneak peek at the finished product. I screwed the mountains into place securely from the back through the washer and then it was on to the final product shots. I am really happy with the final product. I think it looks fantastic and know that it will look great on someone's wall. I really want to say thanks so much for watching and please leave some comments below. I'm always looking for pointers on how to improve. This being my first video, I would love some feedback. You can also follow me on Instagram at Molly Wally Woodworking. Thanks again so much for watching and hope you enjoyed.